So hello everyone. So we welcome you back to this another session on current affairs. Okay. So we have been promising you of going for around 13 months of current affairs, uh, which has been covered on from March 2022. Okay. Uh, so we have almost covered many number of current affairs. So we'll try to cover around 500 most important mains oriented current affairs topics. Okay. In this particular session. Okay. So we'll start with this particular session from uh, uh, for today okay uh, so we'll try to see what we have today for the current affairs so the first topic that will go over here is for economic development plus infrastructure which will be basically useful for you in the economics perspective okay so you can see that government plans satellite city in Jagiro paper mill land so we all know that we have got a paper mill uh, that is under the Hindustan Paper Corporation Limited. So we can see that this Hindustan Paper uh, Mill, which was in Jagirot and also in the Kachar Valley, this was basically uh, turned down to be one of the major industries after this government, that is mainly if I say about the NDA, one government. It is not for the Himanta Vishwasarma, it is during the time of Sarvananda Sunwal when this paper mill was basically closed. Okay. So, uh, we have got this stretch of land which is basically a government land. So, government has keep land for this. Government has said that satellite township. And the satellite township is main concept to keep. Satellite township is main concept to hold. That our Zikhini population is going to be there. Okay. In this area of Gohati. Okay. And the Gohati is a very basic population. Hoi. So, if supposedly if this is Gohati over here. So, obviously we will try to build some of the satellite townships in the Karnamidano. Supposedly if this is the earth. Okay, we have got a satellite moon which is directly revolving around the earth. Okay, so at some point of time, Juli Ami Teruba, Ekonjuli Gohati Hoisai. Okay, if supposedly if this is Gohati, if this is Gohati, okay, which is today getting overpopulated and it is getting more and more denser. Okay, population bahi goes, density bahi goes. Okay, so at some point of time, government directly wants to create some of the townships which will be at the periphery of Gohati. So this periphery towns will make people move to these particular areas which will ease out the population scenario in the Guwahati city. So the third one government has planned for this that government plans are like sitting in Jagiro paper mill and therefore a proposal in this regard is expected to be submitted to the central government soon. Okay, so it will be Guzi Palu, Mozi to Kolu. So you can see the satellite city, it was a parent city, highway, satellite city is like Okay, and it is basically around the metropolitan area. Okay, so it was a new zone. So Kimani acres of land 550 acres. It was an important one. Hindustan Paper Corporation Limited, that is HPC. Okay. Chalo. Coming to the next one. Violates the spirit of Sino-India agreement, which says about China. So Amit knows that recently there has been an exercise which has been conducted in this region between USA and India which is directly known to be the Yudh Abhyas. It's a military exercise. Okay. I will report for you at Auli in Uttarakhand which is in October 2022 and some 100 kilometers from the line of actual control. So we all know, Zudhi Moyazi, Ekhon Jammu and Kashmir will go. So we all know that we have got the Siachin Glacier over here. Our Ekinipa NK, our TSA, this line. This line is the LOC line, that is the line of control. Our Ekini, our POK area. This area is known as Gilgit Baltistan. This is the POK, that is the Pakistan occupied Kashmir area. Ephale, our TSA. In this side, we have got a line which is known as the line of actual control. Our Ekini, our Kipuli Koyaso, Aksai Chin. Aksai Chin, which is basically another control of China today. 
okay because it's a it's a part of india and this region was a tibetan area but this tibetan area is totally been proclaimed today by china so ekhini amar lac hoy so ekhini area te we can see that this 18th edition of the youth abhyas took place at this region which is known as aruli in uttarakhand okay so it was a important aspect so youth abhyas to ki hoy you can see that it is the largest running joint military training and defense cooperation endeavor between india and us and the exercise was started in 2004 under the us army pacific partnership program and the exercise is hosted alternately between both countries so as is the youth abhyas amar india hoy se etu may be kali porohi godla kot ho pare us at ho pare okay so that is one of the important aspect of this particular news then you can see that after the 1962 war the chinese claim that they had withdrawn to 20 km behind the lac in november 1959 and in the eastern sector the border coincides in the main with the so called macmohan line and in the western and the middle sector it is coinciding with the main traditional customary line which has been consistently been pointed out by china to azuri moi ko about the region যদি এটু রিজন হয় এখন উত্তরাখণ্ড আছে তাছ এখন নেপাল আহি যায় দেন উই ক্যান সি দিস ইজ সিকিম এন্ড দেন নেপালে গলু সো আমি জানো দ্যাট দিস পার্টিকুলার পোরশন ইজ দ্য ওয়েস্টার্ন সেক্টর পোরশন হুইচ ইজ বেসিক্যালি নোন এজ দ্য এলএসি দ্য রিজন হুইচ ইজ বেসিক্যালি উইথ রেসপেক্ট টু সিকিম ইজ আ সেটল বর্ডার আর এটুক আমি আইবি বলি কো ইন্টারন্যাশনাল बाउंड्री বিটুইন চায়না এন্ড ইন্ডিয়া एक्चुअली ইট ইজ বিটুইন টিবেট এন্ড ইন্ডিয়া বাট আমি এটু আজি মানিছো যে দিস ইজ আ সেটল বর্ডার আর ইয়াতে আমার কোনো ডিসপিউট নাই উই ডু নট হ্যাভ গট এনি ডিসপিউট উইথ দ্য বর্ডারস উইথ চায়না ইন রিজনস লাইক সিকিম আর বাকি এখানে যে কি অরুণাচল প্রদেশ বিকজ দে নো বিকজ চাইনিজ ডাইরেক্টলি ক্লেমস দ্যাট অরুণাচল প্রদেশ ইজ আ পার্ট অফ দ্য সাউথ টিবেট ঠিক আছে তো এই কারণে তাহলে গুটে অরুণাচল খন ক্লেম করে এন্ড দেফোর দিস রিজন ইজ নোন এজ দ্য ম্যাকমোহন লাইন সো ম্যাকমোহন লাইন আমি গুটে বর্ডার দন কো ম্যাকমোহন লাইন তো আমি কোন তো কো অনলি দ্য ইস্টার্ন সেক্টর হুইচ ইজ বেসিক্যালি দ্য রিজন অফ অরুণাচল প্রদেশ ওকে সো এটু আহিলে আমার ইয়াতে দেন ডিউরিং দ্য ডোকলাম ক্রাইসিস উই ক্যান সি চাইনা আর ইন্ডিয়া টু অ্যাবাইড বাই দ্য 1959 এলএসি India rejected the concept of LAC in both 1959 and even in 1962 when the Sino-India War took place. Okay, so it was an important bone of contention as well between India and China, and to solely as well. But in some point of time, I mean, kiri ko the India ke deba China like a lot uh, irritate kori bata hai. Even China wama kori thake. Recently, you can see that in the Indian Ocean, some good number of fishermen has come. The hathe Nizor exclusive economic zone eri bala. crossing all territories they have reached the indian ocean china caught indian ocean caught aur tate ahi pilai dekha rakhale fishing kori se so obviously taha to irritate kori thake ami o gereba taha to irritate kyo to so to send a message or a signal to the chinese counterparts that we are also countering every adversaries that you were today doing against india okay to etu ahi gol next ahi gol ki governance mechanism 7504 bigas of patra land under encroachment that is directly in state panel aro maximum encroachment ko hoise maximum encroachment hoise that is the encroachment of 74% in the borpeta district because we can see that today borpeta district has much amount of illegal infiltrators who have came on from regions like bangladesh ओके बांग्लादेशर जेखिनी इलीगल इन्फिल्ट्रेशन्स आसीले दे हैव मैक्सिमम सेटल इन दिस एरिया ऑफ बोरपेटा फॉर व्हिच द एनक्रोचमेंट इज मच मोर इन दिस पर्टिकुलर डिस्ट्रिक्ट ओके सो हेतु कारणे एतु वस्तु न्यूज आसीले सो हेतु कारणे यू कैन सी दैट द सत्रो लैंड मेजरिंग किमान 75 7504.2 बिघास इन द स्टेट इज अंडर एनक्रोचमेंट एंड थ्री फोर्थ ऑफ द टोटल एनक्रोचमेंट एरिया इज इन द बोरपेटा डिस्ट्रिक्ट एलो So this number is also very important. The Kiman Bigha of the state is under encroachment. It is around seven five zero four point two Bigha. Okay, and you can see that the Assam State Commission for Review and Assessment of Problems of Sectoral Lands has stated in the interim report. Okay, and therefore you can see that the commission members submitting the report to the Chief Minister on Friday that Kiman Kini encroachment so yes. ओके आरो जदि म अल अकल बरपेटा डिस्ट्रिक्ट रे को सो आउट ऑफ द 74% किमान बिघा ऑफ लैंड होय 5545 ओके सो 7504.2 भितर 5545 कोन ओनली बरपेटा डिस्ट्रिक्ट रे आरो हेतु कारणे बरपेटा डिस्ट्रिक्ट हैज गॉट 74% सो एटु एना बहुत डांगर हमर एटा इशू होय दैट हाउ 
this Hotra land, we know about Borbetra Hotra, which is very famous across this country, not even in Assam. So obviously we can see that Iman Khini Zudi encroachment solely as then it, it's a grave concern today for people to have no faith on that particular government who is preserving the culture, the heritage, the tradition of this country. So it was a very dumb aspect once we are directly talking about this particular elements. Okay, so it was according to this interim report, Iman Khini Bigha of land. Okay, and yate it was a hotter like uh, Borbeta Khatra, but Bohut Kini Aru ar Khatra, like followed by the Lokimpur, Nogao district, Thoburi district, Bongao district, Ebla Kato Ase, to Ebla Kami, clear Koriba Lagiwa, and we have to protect our tradition, our culture, which has been encroached by these invaders. Okay? <coughs> excuse me. That is good. Anyways, so, Ketukarne, Etobosto, New Zealand. So, Assam State Acquisition of Lands Belonging to Religious or Charitable Institutions of Public Nature Act 1959. So, it will under a report to publish. Okay, next item. <clears throat> 15 more Kukichin refuses enter Mizoram from Bangladesh. So, it is recently about the issues only about Kuki and Chin. Okay, it is about at least 15 more refugees belonging to the ethnic Kukichin community entered Mizoram from the Chittagong Hill Trust. Chittagong Hill Trust goes it is in region of Bangladesh. Okay, this is an important port, Chittagong port or Okay, which is once a port of India, British India. That's what we can see the Tarpura, we can see that some of the Kukichin peoples have directly arrived in this hill tracks of Mizoram. Okay, so it was a problem solely yes, because this people has been not recognized as some of the peoples living in this region of uh, Bangladesh. Bangladesh or Nizoram Bulina Bhabai, indigenous Bulina Bhabai. Okay, so you can see that this Kuki ethnic group which originated in the Mizo hills includes the chiefs of Myanmar and the Mizos of Mizoram and the Kukis of Bangladesh. All three groups share the same ancestry. So Kuki, Chin and Mizo. So members of the Kuki Chin community from Bangladesh who entered the Mizoram are being referred to as officially displaced persons in the state government records as India does not have a law on refugees. And neither we are basically assigned towards the international refugees. So we can see that According to the 1951 Refugee Convention, a refugee is a person who has been persecuted and forced to leave his native country. Okay, so Edu Karne Amizano, just since we do not have got any law, therefore, unlike refugees, internally displaced people are not subject of any international convention. Okay, so Edu Karne, since they are directly being migrated from one place to the other, since they are facing problems, atrocity is spicy. Okay, so therefore, they are slowly shifting towards the regions which is basically concerned towards their own. Community. So, as you see, more cause Mijo, Kuki, Chin, they are all same. They have got the same ancestry. So, obviously, the people will directly try to come towards the state which is more stable. And we know that amongst these regions like Myanmar, India, as well as Bangladesh, the most stable state as well as the country is basically India, as well as the most stable state of the uh, state of this northeast is basically Mizoram. So, here you can see that and that is mainly the concern of this particular populace living inside Mizoram. Next, to the more political area. So you can see about the UCC, Uniform Civil Code. Okay, and the user is like, what kind of user Bill on Uniform Civil Code introduced in Rajya Sabha. So we know about UCC resonates with country one rule to be applied to our religious communities and the term uniform civil code explicitly mentioned in part 4 article 44 of the indian constitution part 4 of dpsp that is directive principles of the state policies okay so therefore article 44 says that the state shall endeavor to secure for the citizens a uniform civil code throughout the territory of india so we can see that a private member's bill, which is basically the UCC, for a panel to prepare UCC and amid protest. So, BJP MP Kirodi Lal Mina moved for leave to introduce the Uniform Civil Code, India Bill 2020, to provide for the constitution of the National Inspection and Investigation Committee. So, Yate, Kune Produce Code is BJP MP Kirodi Lal Mina. Okay, it was to our various number of exams of the recently which private member bill referred to as UCC. Who has introduced this particular bill? So it is basically BJP MP Kirodi Lal Meena. Okay, so he is basically from Rajasthan. So it was Article 44. 
so we know they cover areas like marriage divorce maintenance inheritance adoption and succession of the property and it is based on the premise that there is no connection between so religion and law in modern civilization okay so ami ki korechilo religion and law to ami separate separate lakhisilo because for other religion as you know ko that we have got a hindu marriage act and we have got a muslim marriage act ओके सो आमी मुस्लिम्स तो बाहर रखी सिलो बाकी हिंदू मैरिज और आमी सो कुमाई नहीं सिलो क्रिश्चियन सुमाई नहीं सो जेन सुमाई नहीं सो बुद्ध सुमाई नहीं सो सिख सुमाई नहीं सो सो वो क्या सुमाई इस पास है सो वी बेसिकली नीड्स अ यूनिफॉर्म लॉ दैट ए एडूट है कि बना है ओके सो दैट इज़ द मेन कंसर्न्स � that the status of uniform codes in india amarga ne crpc as a trust for a property etc partnership act etc so all these things are basically covered a gutte law khin ami ekalaga koribo khudisu under the ucc so that people does not have got confusions according to each and every law prevailing in the society today okay next ahila unique airborne electromagnetic survey for tunnel under brahmaputra ओके सो यारे की कोरी सो यू कैन सी देयर विल बी अ टनल अक्रॉस द रिवर ब्रह्मपुत्र ओके व्हिच विल बी अदर ग्राउंड ऑब्वियसली सो यारे कोसा स्पेशलाइज्ड एयर ब्रॉन इलेक्ट्रिक मैग्नेटिक सर्वे एईएम हैज बीन कंडक्टेड फॉर द प्रपोज्ड थ्री ट्यूब रेल कम रोड टनल अंडर द ब्रह्मपुत्र व्हिच विल कनेक्ट सिलघाट ऑन द साउथ बैंक एंड थलाईविल इन द नॉर्थ एज अ प्रोजेक्ट व्हिच कुड टर्न आउट टू बी अ स्टनिंग इंजीनियरिंग मार्वेल so the pune korea sir a bro will also be under this particular survey okay are yata dekhi sa kenake e bosu to koribo okay so this is a unidirectional roadway ever ekhale jao pare this is also unidirectional roadway and you can see single track railway in what effort for you okay so therefore you can see that the central government has given in principle approval for the construction of this underwater tunnel na brahmaputra river in assam so what are the key points so the tunnel will connect gopur gopur kon ase it is in विश्वनाथ चलिए ओके आज ये तो सुनिए पूरा अंदर सुनिए ओके सो विथ नुमोलिगोर नुमोलिगोर कौन सा है बोला था ओके सो द टनल विल कनेक्ट गोपुर विथ नुमोलिगोर सो गोपुर इज इन द नॉर्डर्न बैंक एंड नुमोलिगोर इज इन द साउदर्न बैंक ऑफ द रिवर सो द टनल विल बी ऑफ स्टेडिक इंपोर्टेंस एज विल प्रोवाइड राउंड अ ईयर कनेक्टिविटी माने ऑल वेदर रोड पर ओके एनी कोन होल वाला बारी खातले बंद होय नो ऑल बेटर रूम ओके बिटवीन द नॉर्थ ईस्टर्न स्टेट्स ऑफ असम एंड आल्सो अरुणाचल प्रदेश सो द नेशनल हाईवे एंड इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर डेवलपमेंट कॉर्पोरेशन इंडिया एंड एच ए आई डी सी एल हैज रोप इन द यूएस बेस्ड फॉर्म्स लुइस बर्जर फॉर दी सेम ओके सो याते अमर एन एच ए आई डी सी एल ए कार्ड आउट करिवो लुइस बर्जर आउट करिवो अकॉर्डिंगली विद दिस पर्टिकुलर प्रोजेक्ट सो यू कैन सी देयर आर वेरियस नंबर ऑफ अदर प्रोजेक्ट्स और this uh, particular tunnels that we can see today in the context of india so ami man kini aji dekhisu so aji amar brahmaputra majo etu holo it is basically a marvel that will come with respect to our technology across regions okay next g20 presidency provides great opportunities to india okay so we know about g20 so ami ebar g20 ami uh, uh, like will be organizing the g20 by the time of september 2023 okay so india's g20 presidency provides a great opportunity for the country to lead the world as vishwa guru as india is vishwa guru type what lead korea sir and even you can see about the recent visit the three country visit of uh, prime minister narendra modi so ki kori sile so you can see that uh, australian prime minister has said uh, the prime minister of india to be the boss okay and also if you see about the papua new guinea the fiji as a country so they are directly saying that we want india to be the leader of the global south okay so aji india is directly acting as a vishwa guru and therefore g20 presidency provides a great opportunity for the country to lead the world as a vishwa guru to mitigate the challenges facing mankind and pave the way for a better world for posterity and therefore it has been recently said by arunachal pradesh governor brigadier dr pd mishra so ej to factor hoy ase aji india leading the whole contingent today india is leading the g4 countries today india is leading every number of countries which are associated with the economy okay india is one of the fast growing economies of the world okay today india is leading with the global south today india is directly leading the indo pacific region to a bahut bostu india as is lead korea sir so in this criteria or in this context i can directly say that india is directly evolving as one of the main country in this region which will act like a vishwa guru okay so as you know about g20 
even in the G7 today uh, it will slowly and slowly exit up to G8. Okay, like G7 to G8 to hope. G8 to Russia, Russia or India can G7 to go. So, it is like a G7 or G8 to go. Okay, so G8 obviously Russia and Hagibo, G8 to Hagibo, India. Okay, so therefore, this is the G7, this is the G8, this is the G20. Okay, so we can see that G20 is an informal group of 19 countries and the European Union with representatives of the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank. So, IMF or World Bank or cohesively we are totally having a uh, amount of presence in the G20 okay so the G20 president rotates annually and according to a system that ensures a regional balance over the time for the selection of the presidency 19 countries are divided into five groups each having no more than four countries so the presidency rotates between each group and every year the G20 selects a country from another group to be the president so India is in group two which also has Russia South Africa and Turkey Okay, so question look, five groups of side country divide for it. So group two, yeah, the Kunguna said Russia, South Africa, and Turkey alongside India. Okay, so G20 does not have a permanent secretary or headquarters. So that is one of the important criteria. importantly This is the details that is divided into five groups, each come each group having four countries. So Amar group of Kunguna said we have got Russia, we have got South Africa, we have got Turkey. And also the last one is India. So I mean also group two does. Okay, so it was an important one, but since this things came into prominence, our G20 is here to organize the boy. So you can expect a direct question coming in from G20 this time. Okay. Next I on law and order law. So SC refuses to entertain Satyendra Jain plea against High Court order. Are we to mainly money laundering case? It was just case one, but mainly it is an evil key, money laundering key. So we know money laundering, it is the process of turning a black money into white money. Our target of both stages. Supposedly, we know about the stage of uh, like placement, first placement, okay, types of layering, second step, or types of integration. Okay, Tamar Lagi. So we know about the money laundering process. So directly converting a black money into white money is the main aspect of money laundering. Okay. So here you can the case the Supreme Court today refused to enter in a plea filed by jail Delhi Minister Satyendra Jain against an order of Delhi High Court which sought the response of the enforcement directorate to his plea seeking bail in a money laundering case. Okay. So it was since reject Kora Gosila, here you can a case to Amar Jana asset. So to kind of, is the process of making large amounts of money guaranteed, generated by criminal activities such as drug trafficking or terrorist funding appear to have come from a legitimate source. Okay. So it is the money laundering process. Our key money laundering we can again prevent for you under the PMLA Act of 2002. That is the Prevention of Money Laundering Act 2002. Our A Act can mainly decide for you as an enforcement like it would. Okay. That we refer to as So this one, Prevention of Money Laundering Act 2002, which has enacted in response to India's global commitment of Vienna Convention. That is to combat the menace of money laundering, and this includes who? United Nations. Okay, United Nations include who? Perhaps you can see about Basel Statement, Principles 1989, 40 recommendations of the Financial Action Tax Force on Money Laundering 19. So we all know about FIT and Financial Action Tax Force. So they grey list, back list, published for it. So that is also one of the major entity of this particular EMP. Okay. So next, Sharma inaugurates partial commissioning of Jika water supply project. Jika, Jika to ki hoy? Hato Japan International Cooperation Agency. Jika. Ki kori hai sir? Guwahati water supply. Okay. So ami Jika kora sobe zano. So aji Guwahati jiman kini ami water supply paya so it pour pura hiya sir. Jika pura hiya sir. So obviously, it is carried by the Guwahati Metropolitan Drinking and Water and Sewers Board alongside the GJB, that is the Guwahati Jal Board, with financial support from the government of Japan. Okay. So Jika provides support in the amount of JPY under 29,453 million, or roughly 1736 crore, to provide safe and dependable drinking water supply to about 142,000 households in Guwahati. Our A2 mainly focus on Guwahati today. Don't confuse it with the pipe connections, which is basically going on to the rural side. And now recently, Chief Minister Pani has left there. So don't compare it with that. It is different. So A2 I mean mainly Guwahati focus on Guwahati 
pani ami bhalke diya bole ami sai asu okay and this is directly a target of around 144000 households okay which is roughly a population of around uh, which is with a roughly uh, like uh, amount of around 29450 million roughly in INR 1736 crore okay our population to that is the households so the project has improved the living circumstances of locals by constructing new water supply facilities and alerting those that already exist in Guwahati, South Central and Northwards. Okay, so it is But Jika ko hazardi ma ola ko bolao. Jika ki hai? It's an international cooperation agency, the sole Japanese government organization responsibility of implementing. ODA was established by particular law as an administrative organization under the government of Japan. So the Jika aspires to promote international cooperation, and this is some form of soft power. But Japan is directly promulgating towards the whole world. In one way, Jika is in India. Jika is in India. Across the world. Okay, whoever uh, Japan has got good partnership. So we know we are some of the good friends with Japan. Okay, so it is a Jika. So the largest bilateral donor organization in the world, Jika serves as a link between Japan and developing nations offering support in the form of loans, grants, and technical cooperation to help the later build up their capacities. So obviously, Amar, as a monthly poison, I have a technology. Nahi. Zitu, I mean, is again easy, but as the sense, I Japan or lower cooperation, Halamar, Edukana, Jika, through the play, I mean, a pipe connections to, I mean, utilize for years so that they could directly make some of the funds, they could directly grant and also help us in various number of technical supports. Okay, so schemes plus policy, here's the next Apada Mitra being trained in calamity prone districts. So it's basically a question of disaster management. Okay, which is a part of your GS3. IS and DM Internal Security and Disaster Management. Okay, so the key question a workshop on the midterm review and documentation of best practices of Akata Mitra scheme conducted by the National Disaster Management Authority in collaboration with SDM, that is State Disaster Management Authority. So Etu Pune headquarters, Etu headquarters are Prime Minister, Etu Pune headquarters, Etu DF Korea CMA. Okay. Adopted by the states and a total of 30 states from across India participated in the workshop. So the National Disaster Management Authority has implemented the pilot project Apadi in 25 states and UTs, covering a good number of areas and cities or okay of all districts which are under this particular uh, disaster affected areas. So this is directly a central sector scheme. Central sector scheme it's not centrally sponsored scheme. It will give her central sector. And when I say central sector, that means what? It is 100% central government funded. 100% central government funded. So it will come central sector scheme. Okay. So therefore, that was launched in May 2016. And NDMA is the implementing agency. So it's a program to identify suitable individuals in disaster prone regions who can be trained to be first responders in time of disasters. Azi, Kibata calamity goal, supposedly. At some point of time, if this calamity is affecting a particular region, a con district, the NDMA is an assayaman, that one ki thake SDMA, our that one thake DDMA, that is District Disaster Management Authority. Our District Disaster Management Authority is both local authorities or local come milai, a kalaga milai milai, take it up a disaster relief operations will conduct for it. So, Azi, who will be the first responder? Obviously, this local authorities who is well known about their respective areas. So, if this, this can be trained, if they can be trained, obviously, we could directly enhance the people's saving effort in the time of any calamities. So, we look at Azi, this through this Apada Mitra scheme, the NDMA directly focuses on training some of the individuals who are the first responders in the time of any disasters. So, yeah, then, Main aim to key about to provide the community volunteers with skills that they would need to respond to their community immediate needs in the aftermath of a disaster, thereby enabling them to undertake basic relief and rescue tasks during emergency situations such as floods, flash floods, and urban flooding. Because our main problem to key, our main problem to flooding. Okay, today repeatedly our earthquakes are regular that they our main problem to change your content. But today, what is the main problem? Disaster problem was that it is basically floods. We require, we directly regularly get floods. So that is the situation we can see in this particular context. Our Hedukane is scheme to Amar Armbo Okay. So you can see training institutions. Okay. To train community volunteers. 
जुने वॉलेंटियर को रिको ड्यूरिंग द टाइम ऑफ डिजास्टर्स ओके आल्सो टू क्रिएट अ कम्युनिटी इमरजेंसी स्टॉक पाइल और रिजर्व एट द डिस्ट्रिक्ट कंटेनिंग एसेंशियल लाइट सर्च रेस्क्यू इक्विपमेंट मेडिकल फर्स्ट एड किट्स इबला एटा दा हमें कोबा स्टोर करबो लागिबो एटो हमर इंपोर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट होय जाय दैट्स ऑल टू डिसेमिनेट ट्रेनिंग एंड एजुकेशनल टूल्स डेवलप अंडर द प्रोजेक्ट टू मोर फ्लड प्रोन डिस्ट्रिक्ट्स इन द सब्सिक्वेंट फेजेस ऑफ द स्कीम इटो दा हमर लागिबो ओके so it is to disseminate training and education tools develop other the project to more flood prone districts in the subsequent phases of the scheme lahe lahe jeti amar schemes to agbahi goi thakibo tetia aru bostu ami dibo lagibo aru ami tools dibo lagibo so that people would be much more aware about what to do what not to do during a time of disaster okay so it was ila amar apada mitra scheme or under next jodi ami ahi jao art and culture Unnakoti makes it to tentative list of world heritage sites. You can see this is the world heritage sites, uh, such a beautiful rock cut sculptures that you can see in this region of Unnakoti. So it is here. It's a Sebai pilgrimage and dates back to seventh or ninth century, if not earlier. Okay, so it was our seventh or ninth century that was done, and it's basically a Sebai pilgrimage site. So you can see Lord Shiva in this particular area. So it has been said that Unnakoti means one less than a crore. and that is it is said that this many rock cut carvings are available so this is the thing you can see okay so the images which are found at this particular region which is the region of unnakoti are of two types namely rock cut figures eta rock carvings ami dekhisu aro eta ami original stone image dekhisu okay so that is the two things that we can see in this particular unnakoti region so among the rock cut carvings the central shiva head and gigantic ganesha figures deserve special mention okay so yeah that yeah sake horbo nori ba because it may be blurred i don't know because it's directly a cut out from the newspaper okay so obviously if you see that here the images found on unnakoti are of two types at a rock cut figure hoy at a stone image hoy okay and amongst the rock cut carvings the central shiva head shiva head to say or rock cut ओके आरु की असे जायजेंटिक गणेश फिगर्स डिजर्व स्पेशल मेंशन तो याते की होर की होर पाइसु शिवर हेड पाइसु एक्सक्यूज मी एंड जायजेंटिक गणेश इट पाइसु इट दा पाइसु ओके सो दैट इज वन ऑफ द इंपोर्टेंट थिंग इन दिस पर्टिकुलर ओनर कोर्ट एक्सक्यूज मी सॉरी so it is that amar yet a special mention ase so to dani koba bahut important hoy okay about this particular region okay which is directly told to be undakoti which is one of the shaibai pilgrimage site okay uh, and therefore this is a recent uh, like uh, covings that we can see in this particular region of north east which is basically the region of tripura to ami kon dekha paisu tripura dekha paisu okay it's a region in tripura so please note that by also because it is important for north eastern region okay it was very important okay next if i come to if closely monitoring situation along lac in arunachal so obviously ami janu je this line of actual control where china every time tries to build a confusion amongst the indian government that this particular area is theirs eta confusion create kore bolche sai dispute create kore bolche sai actually amar modhe kono dispute nai but for them this is a part of southern tibet and that is one of the important aspect why we can say that this region needs close monitoring aro heto aji kune kori ase indian air force so the iaf scramble fighter jets last week following china's increasing air activities on the side of lac in the tawang sector of arunachal pradesh people familiar with the matter say on tuesday okay so we can see that in the tawang sector we can see that what is the importance of arunachal pradesh from india and chinese perspective so we can see strategic significance because arunachal pradesh known as the north east frontier agency until 1972 is the largest state in the north east and shares in the national border with tibet in the north and northwest and bhutan towards the west and myanmar towards the east so state is like a protective shield to the north east just because of the presence of the mountains so jodi aji ami janu je about eastern himalayas so if arunachal pradesh would have not been with us then probably china would have invaded north east 
okay but because of the terrain or because of the protective natural shield which is because of the himalayas china could not have a entry into this particular region aru he karane china etu jaga bisare jate they can easily tomorrow if they once they can easily invade india in the coming times okay so the state is like a protective shield so you can see the region of arunachal pradesh so not of directly china as and not uh, east of myanmar as okay uh, in the north east side also some of the portion china as all of south east north east of all by east of all i can see myanmar we can see in the north west bhutan as okay so that is basically the region okay and a good line to over here this whole line area is even the line area as it our mcmohan line and china directly claims this whole area good or not to place to china claim for us okay and they say this is a part of what south tibet okay but for us this is not a disputed area okay it's an integral part it is an integral part of india it will be also in the future okay aruta kotha is a bhutan factor because taking control of arunachal would mean that bhutan would have chinese neighbors on both the western and the eastern borders if beijing gain control so to the kalipuri arunachal pradesh khon china also rahi jay as it is sambhav na hoye deo but still hypothetically if i say So obviously Bhutan will be guarded by a fellow China as a fellow China as a fellow China. But today Bhutan only on the western, mainly western will be known, north western will be known, our northern side of China will be as a. It is not there. It is not India as a. So on the east and the west side, uh, east and the southern side, we have got India surrounding Bhutan. So therefore, it will not factor as a. Okay, our other is a key. Since China has control over India's water supply to the northeastern region, it has constructed several dams and can use water as a geostrategic weapon against India by causing flooding or drought in the region. So, therefore, the Sangpo River, which is basically the Brahmaputra River, which originates in Tibet, that is good. Can you imagine? Dams are being constructed. That is why today Brahmaputra is to flow. It is coming, coming, going. Okay, and therefore, it is mainly hampering the agrarian state like Assam and also an agrarian country like Bangladesh. mainly the rural areas so aji jodi china amak water or hydrological data dibo lage tekhon kole bahut kini paisa demand kore but the same data is given in free to bangladesh so etu karane aji amar problems to bahut beshi hoye ase with china because we do not have got a good relation with this country okay so aji jodi moi kom china logot amar only economic relations se tar bahire amar kono bele official relation nai okay next sahitya academy award for three from assam okay so yeah the three from state bags translation awards okay you can see all these eminent personalities okay so we can see what is sahitya academy award established in 1954 it's a literary honor that is conferred annually by sahitya academy india's national academy of letters and this academy gives 24 awards annually to literary works in the languages it has recognized and and equal number of awards to literary translations from and into the languages of india so it is very important hoy because etu ki hoy 1954 or establish hoyse annually dia ar pune dia sahitya academy dia who is the india's national academy of letters so academy gives 24 awards etu very important okay it has got 24 awards okay to literary works in the languages it has recognized recognized by national language eight languages that is besides the 22 languages remunerated in the constitution of india ko ra se schedule 8 of schedule 8 okay the sahitya academy been recognized also english and rajasthani as languages in which its program may be implemented okay so it is the directly at the addition hall which is very very important besides this already like this So the Sahitya Academy Award is the second highest literary honor by the government of India after the Gyanpeeth Award. Okay, so it is second or third. Gyanpeeth Award so what can talk? That is why the Sahitya Academy Award. Okay, which is a very important award in the context of literary translation etc. in our country. Okay, so India, our ethnic language, ethnic language, that is very very important. Okay, so we can see about Manoj Kumar Goswami, we can see Rashmi Chaudhary. Okay, we can see Bahadur. Then we can see Juli Dotto. We can see uh, Devojit Basu Matari. We can see Purnima Kumar Sharma. Okay, Purna Kumar Sharma. So all these people are having some number of affiliations towards having the Sahitya Academy Awards. Okay, so very important. 
Next, if you see, Sujya Kanto Hazorita elected as Sabha President. Mane, Okom Haikta Hoga. Okay, Siro Senehi Mur, Ahazanoni. Okay, main motto. So we can see that Aham Sahitya Sabha, the oldest literary cultural organization of Assam, was constituted for the development of the Assamese language, literature, and culture in 1970. So the organization evolved from two earlier Kolkata based bodies, Okomia Baha Unnoti Hadani Koba, important. Okomia Baha Unnoti Hadani Koba. Aru Assamese Literary Society, which was established by the Assamese students. Very important. So, it took club for you. It is the organization. Kiki, Kolkata based, Ohomia, Baha, Unnoti, Hadini Hoba. Aru Assamese Literary Society. Okay. So, eminent writers Padmanath Gohai Borwa and Sarat Chandra Goswami became the first president and the first secretary, respectively. Padmanath Gohai Borwa and Sarat Chandra Goswami. Okay, these are the two persons being the president and directly the secretary of the Ahom Hahitta Hoha. Okay, so Assam Sahitya Sabha has been actively involved in transcription works of various classics, moderns, contemporary fictions, analytical books, and book of science, society, and philosophy. Okay, so here to Karne, since he has been recently president of Kotha Isile, so to Karne, this becomes very important. That is Kujo Kanto Hazorita. Okay, so he was declared as the Seventh, uh, this uh, this particular element of to the post of this particular Assam Sahitya Sabha, and he directly took up the presidency, okay, of this reputed and prestige organization like Assam Sahitya Sabha for the enculturation of the Assamese language and its particularly heritage as well as culture, okay. So it was good about the Assam Sahitya Sabha. Next Sahita. India emerges as voice of Global South in United Nations Security Council. Okay. So Global South the countries which are developing, okay, or which are underdeveloped, okay, or small countries. So Global South but Global North Global North are the countries which are basically USA, Canada, Europe, even Australia, New Zealand, you know, Global North Income, mainly income. They have got more income as compared to the countries of the Global South. So, since India is in the G20 presidency, the external affairs minister of India reiterated the country's role as the voice of the global south. And the smaller countries of the Pacific, uh, be it Papua New Guinea, be it Fiji, they have seen India to be their leader of the global south. But India may contest to go to global south because China is also considered one of the country under the global south. So, it is leadership of China, do it like China and China. Okay. So, Aji, Borikhan may be African countries and China support Koribo. Borikhan and Okoribo. So, let's see what is directly in store for India at this present time period. So, Ijamakolu, Global North reports to countries like this, okay, and includes countries like Asia, Africa, and South America. So, how can India be the voice of the Global South? So, championing the Global South today would demand more active Indian engagement with the massive regional politics within the developing world. So, Aji, developing world, there are both key challenges. Sir. And these challenges are growing further. Lahala hai bahi go yes. So these challenges are one of the elements which India needs to tackle as soon as possible in this growing context of challenges. So India must also come to terms with the fact that the Global South is not a coherent group and does not have a single shared agenda. So ETA agenda nothing, Global South group. Global South group, as you more know about the countries of the Global South, be it from Asia, be it from South America, be it from Africa. Every country has got their own respective problems or challenges. And this becomes a major concern for a country like India to have a full control over the global south. So, a difference skinny ami alok sabo We have to consider this di uh, these differences so that we can make this whole area very much susceptible towards growth and development. So, this demands tailoring of Indian policy to different regions and groups of the developing world. India is eager to become a bridge between the north and the south by focusing on practical outcomes rather than returning to old ideological battles. So, Aji, India directly acts as a bed, acts as a bridge. India directly as a bridge, but not our South Amazon. Developed our developing or Amazon, India as a bridge, Karagoyas. And therefore, it directly reiterates its principle of becoming the Vishwa Guru in this particular context. Okay, so a Bosudo Ami bridge for you. Okay, so that is with respect to the global south, what we can see in this present context of the country of India. So, Aji, the India, global south of but India today as the uh, global south of problem. It's not a global south problem. I can say that whatever the world is facing today, the problem, be it from climate change, 
be it from various number of depletion of resources, be it from any other problems, be it from the urban problems, be it from the rural problems, be it from the developing problems, development problems, be it technological problems, Jiran Kine problem as it. Zuri Azi India directly at a standard the law, so India directly rectify all these practices, all these elements, we can directly say that India can become a full potential with respect to the global south. And therefore, all these countries will directly come up to make India the Vishwa Guru of this world. Our India Bodhi Okay, India should directly show the path to all these countries who are the developing countries so that they could directly enhance their capabilities and should turn with the greater countries in the coming times to make India as a role model. And therefore, today what we see that wherever India goes or Indian Prime Minister goes, this thing basically happens with every Indians where the emotions, where the prestige of India is enlightened or enshrined under the world context. World context of India is very limelight of take part. And this is why we are here, 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 we are here. So that is one of the global associate region why we need to focus on this global south and how by developing all such phenomena associated with the problems of this global south, how we can bring changes and development in this region so that India could emerge as one of the greatest partners amongst the developing nations. So it was a global south or Okay. So this is all for today's current affairs. So uh, I just want to announce here over here that we have been starting with the full length test uh, basically on this particular date of 17, 18th and 19th. Okay. Uh, you can register on this particular full length test by scanning this code over here. Okay. The timetable is directly mentioned over here. Okay. The same timetable like the APAC is organizing. Okay. Also, we'll be going with various number of dedicated associations and also we'll be going with various number of case studies and the ethics so that we can produce more and more number of questions that will be very much easier for you to attempt in the upcoming weeks. Okay, so that was in the context of today's current affairs. So we'll be coming up with some of the new and enlightened current affairs which will make your preparation easy for your upcoming weeks. So do follow us under the CSAP CO.in. Also, you can directly connect us via YouTube platform, Instagram as well as Facebook. Or if you have any doubt, doubts or you wants to join us through various number of our programs, you can scan this code or you can directly register over here under 912751541. So that was all from today from my side in the current affairs. Thank you all. Have a good day.